So in this hour, we can try to make everything working. OK. Or at least we can st start, and then I, we, I, can, I can complete the, um, the codes that you have if we don't have enough time. As I was, was mentioning on Slack, you have in the week 13 folder uh, two projects, one for the server, one for the client, that are exactly the same project that we developed, just a mini version of them. Meaning that, for instance, in the React application, we just have get all exams. We don't have add new exams, we don't have edit new exams, we don't have delete new exams. I just got rid of all this function to keep the code shorter and to have you uh, the possibility to just check what we're going to add without having a lot of other codes that is not strictly needed for today. So the, these applications, they're just called server and client, are basically the same. I need to install everything. But you know, also the server, if you don't open it, it just have one API. It's the same, just with less things. And we are trying to, we are going to add the login to this one and protect this root. And then if you have to protect the add, it's the same that we are going to do for the get all, just in another line. But at least the code is, is smaller. So let me start this. So that we, let me check that everything is working. Okay, there is not a lot of a, a lot of a lot of things. There is just the table, and one thing that I added is that alert, the green alert over there that say loading complete. Uh, that is quite useless in this moment, but uh, we will need this kind of alert for welcoming the user after the login, for giving an error if the login is not successful, for instance. So we can reuse these small components to, to do this loading. So in this moment is, is there, not particularly useful, but we will get rid of this message and we use that area for something more. And that um, thing is, a state and is put here. So if message, that is a state containing the message, uh, is, not, is not null, uh, then it renders a row with an alert that is get from um, bootstrap, uh, which the variant is the type of the message. So if the type of the message is success, it will be green. If the type of the message is warning, it will be yellow. And danger, danger will be red as the background just to change uh, the color according to, to the type of the message. And then on close, we'll reset the message. And, uh, and then there is the, the text, the actual text of the message. And here there is the not particularly useful message that say loading complete and the type success. So this is how to uh, render that message here. And I'm going to comment this since it's not, again, it's not really useful, so it was just an example to, to keep this function for the next execution. So let me stop everything and let's start adding the login process. So which is the first thing we need to do to start the login process? before install in React. Created the login for and the login API, right? Otherwise we don't have anything else to do. So we can start from the APIs for instance. So we can create a new API. 
uh, that we can call login. That is a sync, always the same. Basically, we can export it. Um, the login we said it will be a post to a specific address. Uh, which URL we're going to use for login? If we want to do something like the exams, and when we get all the exams, we call the slash exams. When we get a single exam, we don't. But if we need to get a single exam, we write exam slash the ID, the code of the exams. If we want to create an exam, so we say post to exams. In login, which URL we can use to mimic this behavior? Slash API? Slash? No? No slash login? Mm, where login is the identifier? Slash session. When we create a new exam, we do a post to the collection of the exams to create a single new exam. Here, with the login, we are creating a session. So we can do a post to slash sessions since we are creating a single session within the set of sessions available. Like we create a single exam within the set of all possible exams. So this will be, if we want to, to be compliant, then we can be also slash login or whatever, but to be compliant, let's say, with what we, we did up to now, we are going to create a session, we're going to delete a session to, in, the log, in the logout, et cetera. Mm. So this will be um, const response await fetch uh, server URL plus API slash sessions. And we need to pass this extra parameter mm, that is credential uh, includes uh, in addition to clearly methods that is a post. Uh, headers, mm. content type JSON, because we need to pass username and password. Content type application slash JSON. And then we have credential includes because we need to, to have this option enabled and then we need a, a request body. That will be JSON dot stringify the credential we will receive from the login form. That needs to be a parameter here. Okay, so this is um, the usual post with just this credential includes parameter uh, in addition. Then we have the response and we can do as always if response dot okay, then so if response is okay, we have the uh, logged in complete and we have user information back from a server. So we can have const user equal response.json and we can say return user. Mm -hmm. Else, handling the error. 
So const air details await response dot text and throw air details. And we have a response dot text since by default passport will just give us not authorized or not authenticated if we don't personalize that error message. Hmm? So this is default. If we personalize the error message and we pass it as a JSON, we can write response to JSON or we can use the same response to JSON that we use for user, like we did in the past for the other APIs. But by default, again, the response in case of a failed login is just a text that say not authorized. Hmm? So we can keep this. Uh, Then, the login form. So we are going to create a new component that we can call out component. And we are going to, to have the login form. So let me start for, oh, I don't have the exam form anymore. Okay, let's Let's not copy and paste from the, um, for the exam form, but if it's, it's the same that you have in the slides, so we need the state because it's a controlled form. Uh, then we need something from React, from Bootstrap, so import. We will need the form for sure. We will need probably the row, button for submit and the columns. Uh, from uh, React Bootstrap. And then we have the function, uh, login form, That is our component in which we'll have two states. That is const username set username. That by default will be empty and const password set password use state and by default, they will be empty. Mm -hmm. I'm basically copying from the slides, mm -hmm. the login form that we have in the slides. Then, then we will have the form, return, form on submit. We can call the end all submit or end all login or whatever you want to call it. So we need to define this here and all submit that will do something after. And then in the form, we need the form group, the form labels, uh, etc. Form.group control id equal username and form label uh, email let's say that the username is the email and then form dot control 
type email we have an input type for email the value will be username and on change we will have to call the set username so ev set username with ev um, dot target dot value And then we can also say that this is required. And that it's required. It's fine. And then we need the same thing for the password. And I'm going to copy and paste these at least. where this will be password, the label will be password, the control type will be password, the value will be password, and the set will be set password. And we can also say that the mean length is six. And then we need a button for the submit, uh, that is type submit, and would be login. And then we need to export this login form. And we need to do the end of submit, but this is again, it's, it's a form, it's a normal form. So we have event dot prevent default. And clearly the end of submit will have an event. Then we need to build the object credential that we are going to pass to the API that will be easily username and password. Then if you want, you can do other checks on the username and the password, but, and then we will probably have a prop somewhere that we call the login methods with credential. And so these will receive props. Hmm? So more or less should be like this. And then we need the login for the login for function in app. And we need to pass this login function to the root and to this component. So we can here in app create a const and all login for instance that we receive credentials and it will be a sync because we need to call an api so this we call api.login with credentials and we get the user from that API that we have just created. So at minimum, we need to call this. Then we have the user information. And we can use this message that we have seen before. For instance, say set message. And we can say that the type, the message could be user.name and the type could be success. 
So if everything work well, um, we should just set up the message. And then we, we are going to, to continue with this login uh, form because it's not enough, but just to, to continue with the components. Um, then we need to pass this, we need to create a new route, right? To pass this to, that is the route of login. And the element will be the we can call it um, login root. Then we need to define that clearly. And we need to pass the login props as and the login. And then we need to close something here. Okay. And then we need to open the exam views and add another root. Let me copy this. Since it will be very similar, we call the login root, in which the title will be login. And this will be not exam table, but login form. And here we just have login equal props dot login. That is the props we pass through. Pass from apps, we need to export login root. We need to import login root. And we have a root for the login. So if we go in the login root, we have the login form, we can fill username and password, click on, on login, this will send call DPI, send the information to the server. Mm -hmm. So now we can move to the server. We send information to the server and in the server we need to do exactly the things that are written in the slides. Mm -hmm. So first of all, so now we, we go to the server. So first of all, we need, uh, let's write here, the user API. We need app.post, and we said that it is API slash sessions. These will have a request and a response. And let's say that login for now will go well, so with a response we just end, and then we will edit it after, clearly. Hmm? So what we need to do on the server? We need to do two things. One here in the course option, add credentials. True to enable course to receive the cookie for the credentials. And then we need to install a few things. We need to install passport, we need to install passport local, and we need to install express session. So passport for enabling the entire framework, password local for enabling username and password, and session for enabling the session. So, 
let's let me get again the slides so we can follow the exact order that were there. So the first thing that the slides say it was created a form and we we did it. Then install everything and say okay, set up the local strategy. So let's set up the local strategy. So here we need to import passport. Require passport, we need to import passport local mm, that we can call local strategy actually. Require passport local. And we can also import session since we are here require express session so that we have all we need then after the course etc we can set up the local strategy that is username and password and the setup is passport.use here we have new local strategy and inside the new local strategy we have the verify function that will be a sync in our case verify and inside this verify function we will have username password and a callback username password and the callback that I'm going to call it as in the documentation of password CB but stand for callback and now Here is where we verify that the username and the password exist and are valid. So we need to, where do we verify that the username and password are valid? Where are this information about the username and password stored? in the database and yes the database already has a new table that's called user uh, that has two users one is called student and the other one is called test um, with email student at student.polito.it and password that is hashed password uh, that is password and the other user is test as an email like test at polito.it and the password is test to test. So twice test all small uh, caps. And in a database, you have the user column, the email column. You have the name column with the name of the user. You have the hash column and you have the salt column. So you have four column in that table. And so you have the hash and the salt needed to generate that hash for password and for test test as password. So we will need to say const user, a user DAO that we don't have, um, and we can call that um, get user and pass username and password. And this is a wait. Then the user DAO will do whatever it needs to do. Now we, we're going to write that. Uh, and here we can say that everything was went well or not. So if 
the user hmm, is not true for the response that we are going to have from the database, we can return the callback with null and false and any error message. This is when you have hmm, in the client when we write in the API, when we write await response.txt, hmm? that cb null comma false will generate a response that will be a string not authorized, not, authent uh, not authentica authenticated hmm? automatically. Hmm? Then we can personalize here as a third parameter the message so that could be also JSON if we want but for now let's keep this in this way and instead if we have a valid user we can return callback null always null and the user and this will proceed to the next call so this is just to set up the um, local strategy. Then we need to write the get user. So we can create a new file and we can call it userdao.js. Let me copy and paste this so that we have a structure to start. We, here we have a get uh, verify the user. And this will be get user with username and password. And it will return you promise. The select will be select everything from user that is the name of the table where email will be the username because in the client we pass the username the email as the username so this could be email if you want to remember and so here we can put email as a parameter if there is an error, we can reject, as we did before. And here we have two possible cases. One is there is no user. There is no email called in that way. So we have student at student.polito.it, and we have test at polito.it. And in the login form, you write something at polyme.it, and there is no user. Hmm? So we have the case in which we don't have a result. We don't have an error, but the query returns zero rows, hmm? zero results. And in this case, we can simply resolve false because we don't have a user and so we can send the message back, no username or password. And then, finally, we have the, there is a user now we need to check if there is a password that is valid. So we can, for instance, build the user object that will be um, username, user dot, no, row dot email, 
and name row dot name because in the database we have a column for the ID, email, hash of the password, salt, and name. We don't want to send back the password, clearly. We probably don't care about the ID. In this case, we can also pass the ID if we want. So ID row.id. If you think that the application needs the ID, so in, in the case of the movies, probably it makes sense to pass back also the ID. But also in the case of the users, if you have different movies according to different users, it makes sense. And so you just build the user object. Now we need to check if the password is passed is the password in the database. And to do that, we need to use a script. So we need to import, but not install, require a script from, no, sorry. const crypto require crypto. Crypto is the cryptography module in uh, Node.js that has a set of cryptography related function and properties that we need to just use some fr something from there. So we need to import the entire module. So here we are going to call script, as script. So crypto dot as script, and as script as three parameter mandatory, that is the password, the password, the salt, the key length, and then the callback. So the password is the password that we have. The salt is taken from the database. Uh, the key length in the database was 32 byte. And the callback is function, error, and hashed password. So here in the callback, we have the results of the hashing function. And here we can have an error. If we have an error, we can reject the promise again. And if we don't have an error, so it's possible to perform the hashing of the password with that salt, with that length, so we will have something in hashed password. We can check if they are equal. So crypto dot safe timing safe equal. That will need the password and the hashed password just generated to perform the check. So the password in the database and the password hashed right now. So we will write something like row.password and hash password. And if this equal, this equality is true, we are going to return the user because we have correct username and correct password. Otherwise, we're going to resolve to false. So if this is true. We can say resolve user. Else resolve false. So that we can send back the message username and password. The equivalent message of username and password are not valid. Now, we need to do one more change here. If you run this, uh, React uh, node will tell you that row password, row.password, that parameter should be a buffer. 
Mm. So we need to convert the type from string that we have now to a buffer. Mm. So we just need to write buffer dot from. So we generate a buffer from the password in the hexadecimal format. And we'll take the password and we'll just create a buffer from the password using the hexadecimal format because the password is stored in hexadecimal format on the database. So it's already uh, there. So just to tell which kind of buffer it needs to create. And then at that point, this function will compare the hash password, the just hash password with the stored password. And if they are fine, if they are equivalent, we will have the user information back to the server, otherwise we have false. Hmm? Yes, clearly. We have to be dot get because we just um, want to retrieve one user. Hmm? Since the email is unique, we, we will always have one user or zero. It was copy and paste from before. So yeah, yes, we need get. Okay, so this is already exported. I can close it. Um, here, when this is false, we will call the, send the error, otherwise we will send the user. So this is setting up the strategy. What else? After setting up the strategy, we need uh, hmm, to set up the session. Hmm? So let's set up the session here. So app.use session. And we need the three parameters uh, that we said before. The secret, receive, and save initialize. The secret should be a string, whatever you like. It shouldn't be committed on a repository, but in, in our, for our purpose, or should be changed. But it could be really a string that you want. You can be also write like, shh, it's a secret. Whatever. It's just used from, for Express 2 um, for generating safely the session ID. Uh, and then we need receive false and uh, save initialized false. And here, if you have some storage different from the default one, you can also specify store, the storage that you are going to use. And then uh, you need to set up the session in this way and um, to say the password that we are going to use the session. So app.use passport dot authenticate session hmm? this is again to say to password that we are going to use the session to authenticate everything hmm? and this should be a string Again, this is exactly the code that we have in the slides, nothing more. And once you have done once, you can move to the whatever other application with the difference of probably get user if you have other information in the user. And the information you want to store in the session, can, they can be changed. And so now we need to create the other two methods needed by uh, Passport that are serialized user and deserialized user. And then we have almost done. 
serialized user that has a function that receive a user and the usual callback and this serialized user that is basically the same signature with the difference again that serialized user put information in the session storage and deserialize get information from the session storage. So what we want to serialize in the session, we can serialize the entire user object that we have. We just have the ID, the email, and the name, not a lot of information. That could be the information that we want to store in the session. Um, so we just need to write CB null user and for the deserialize we can basically do the same we can return cb null user where the first parameter is always the, the any error so in this case null as as before so this deserialize will get the object user that receive from the um, function that is the same user that will get returned here from the local strategy so this the content of this will go there independently for the name of the variables and that will put all that content in the session storage and this user is the one that you get from the session storage and this function here will put this information in rec.user, rec so in the parameter rec, in the parameter user of the request for any request that is authorized. Okay, so we have the serialized, the deserialized. What we are missing? Serialized, deserialized, oh, the login. Hmm? So we just need to, to log in with password authenticate. We have set up everything, so here, passport.authenticate and the strategy that we are going to use that is local. And here we can say res.json rec.user. So here we have we are calling all the authentication process with the middleware, password.authenticate local, and then if the authentication goes well, and we reach that point, so we don't have any false, any CB null uh, false sent back, we have rest.json, in which in the body of the response will be, we will have the user that we just extracted from the database, put in the session, and get from the session. So, ID, name, and email. These three information on the client. Let me check if I missed anything. Just to be sure. No, okay, apparently. Then if we want to be really compliant with what we did before, we can also set a status to, two, to one, because we created a session, so 201 would be the status code more correct, but otherwise it would be 200, so it's not a big deal. Okay, so we have the login form. We call the DPI. DPI, after all that, um, that, that path will go here. Here we'll have a request user. This request user will hopefully go back to the API here in which we return the user so an object containing ID, email and name and this object is get will go here in the end of login so this user will be an object with ID, email and um, name and we get the name and we show the name on screen And we can check if the, all of this is working, just to be sure not to have lost pieces somewhere. 
Okay, so this is uh, the home page. If we go and log in, we can, um, and the password is password. And nothing happened. Uh, it has imported something wrong as login. Where? Uh, React Bootstrap uh, login is not a function. I agree. End of submit. Ah. Okay. So let's try again. Okay, empty response. Up crashed. User DAO is not defined clearly. Oh, this also is wrong. User DAO is not defined because yes, I created user DAO, but I didn't import it. So const user DAO require user DAO. Anything else? Uh, okay. The third time, okay. The third time is the right one. Clearly it's not the, the behavior we want on React. We want to stay on the login page with the, the message student. But the login was completed because student is actually the name of this person. So we get the name back. So we can, for instance, write here in the end of submit, in the end of in React, uh, maybe welcome student, it would be nice. But anyway, we don't want to stay in the login page. We want to do the login and we're going to see the table. Mm -hmm. And we want, most importantly, we want that if you are not logged in, you don't see anything if not the login form. Mm -hmm. So to do that, we need... So how can we say to React, when you start, don't go to the root, but go to the login page. And if you are not logged in, stay on the login page. What can we use? Yes, we can send the, set the default. But even if you type slash exams, you shouldn't see exams. You should go to the login, because you are not authorized to see that page. Yes, yeah, so we need a state. We for sure need a state, a logged in state, that is true or false. To tell the entire React application, from this moment on, you are logged in or not. And we can render and redirect pages according to the state, to this state. So here, in the end of login, before the welcome message, we can write set logged in, true. And we can create here a state that is logged in and set logged in. This could also be a context, but right now, 
we don't need a context and initialize it with false because we don't actually we are not logged in starting on so when the logged in when the login is successful we set the login as true yes and if we are logged in we trigger the get exam is effect not before not at the first rendering only when we are logged in because we shouldn't call this slash exams api if we are not logged in and if we log out we should avoid calling this and yes Yes, it's executed. But then the root is protected, on the, will be protected on the other side, the API. So, yes, we, we here, we, if we want to double check, we say if logged in. In this case, it will not be executed if logged in is false. But we for sure need to trigger when we're logged in, because at the beginning, we trigger that but the root is protected, so it will give us an error. Then we see the login page. We logged in. If the login is successful, the logged in is true. If we don't put it as a dependency, that will not be recalled another time, so we will not get the exam list. And so we need to put it as a dependency. And then we can avoid the double calling, just checking if logged in is true or false, yes. And so now, here, we can say that this root login actually depends on the status of a logged in on the state of the content logged in. So here in the element, we can say that if we are logged in, if you are logged in, we want to see If we are logged in, we want to see the page with all the exams. And if we are not logged in, we want to go to the login page. And since we are in a route, we can use um, navigate. That will navigate to another page. We navigate to replace. So if we are logged in, we'll go straight to the home page, that is the fault, hmm? the, the exam list. If we are not logged in, we show the um, login root, that is the login form. And we need to do the same things in the other page. So here, We need to write that if we are logged in, we are authorized to see the exam route. Otherwise, if we try to, to, to type the address on the website, on the browser, otherwise we'll need to navigate No, wait. Otherwise, we need to navigate to the login route as before. Yes, thanks. like before, okay? So if you are logged in, we go in the exam page. So even if we type something, so we just have two pages, so we don't need to do this for other pages, but 
and then this is the default route to say nothing to see here or something like that. So we don't really care if you're logged in or not in this case. Yes. You either need to do this here or you can have this information in the context and so you can do that in the, uh, in the single pages. So in, in this case, in the exam views component. But yeah, you need to decide what to do because you can decide that the exam, in this case, we want to have everything protected, but maybe not. Hmm? Maybe the exam list is something that you want to keep open to everybody and you, do, you want to prevent the add only and the edit. You need to act on that portion. So this is up to, to you. So in this case, if we go to the root, we immediately are redirected here. Whatever, if I delete and go here, we, we went here. So if we log in again, password, in this case, we go in the right page, and we have the welcome message here. Hmm? And so now we are logged in. So if I go, I try to go in login again, I can go clearly, but I should be able, well, not if I change the address, right? And why I, I cannot go back there where it was? Why cannot go anymore on localhost 3000? I just logged in. What happened? Yes, I not explicitly, but basically implicitly refresh the web page because I changed the URL and the browser consider a change URL like a new request for the server. So it, re it reloaded the entire React application. So even if I am logged in, even if I have a valid session in, in the server, I cannot retrieve the session anymore because I'm not sending back the cookies. Is there in no place in the React application which I say, check if I'm still logged in, if my session is valid. There is no place. So we can add, for instance here, another use effect that just does this. Check if I am authorized or not, if my session is still valid. Hmm? So it could be a uh, uh, const check authorization. That will be a sync. Uh, that will call an API that we don't have that is API dot um, get user info. If we want to keep the name that is in the slides. And if this is going well, we're going to say set logged in. True. And here we can call checkout and this needs to be done at the beginning. We don't, we don't have this API, so we, we need to write clear with them. But the idea is that we ask to the user, I am still, to the server, I'm still logged in. The cookie that I pass in the request is still valid. My session ID is still valid. Whatever info we get, we can get the user info if we need to display those somewhere. And then we can store that. Here, we, don't, we are not storing anything. And then if we have this request valid, we set the login. So what happens that if I when refresh, the, this is called immediately because it's a use effect on empty square parenthesis, square bracket, and we immediately check if we are logged in. If we have a valid session, we don't go in the login page, but we go in the uh, exam page. Okay? And then after doing that, the other things that we need to do, but not, the other things that we need to do on React is 
going in the APIs that we need, like this one, and add, since this should be protected, add credentials, include, like we did for the login. So all the APIs that need to pass the cookie will need to have credential includes. And then we need to protect in the server the API. So the is logged in middleware that there is in the slides that is not yet written, but we can create here a const is logged in uh, with um, request, response, and next. And check if I'm going by memory, he is authenticated. Return next. Otherwise, return res.status for one dot JSON, etc. Something like this should be. So every time we call this get, first of all, is called is logged in and check if the request is authenticated. So if there is a cookie, is the cookie has a valid session ID, is the session ID is a valid session ID on session storage that is still active, etc. And then if this is true, then we next we go processing this. Oops this callback here with the request response and then the, the body of this specific method. And we can also write app.use is logged in if we want to apply this to all our APIs. Like we did with app.use express.json, also that express.json here, this one is a middleware, like the one we created. Also, Morgan is a middleware. These are middlewares that apply to all the, ser the entire server. Hmm? So if we want to apply a middleware to the entire server, we can write app.use is logged in. We don't want here, because the login shouldn't be logged in before doing the login. So we don't want to apply this to the entire routes, but that is an option if you want. So we want to call it just for the APIs that needs to be protected. In our case, get exams. In our case, also the add, the delete, and the edit will, be, will need to be protected. In other applications, some will be public pages, accessible to public information, accessi accessible to everybody, and others will be instead protected information, like in our case, so they will, be, will have is logged in in place. Okay, so it's basically time to leave. So what I'm going to do is complete these uh, after the class so that you have the, uh, basically the, this API here is missing, the get user info, uh, and the server call, the server route to reply to this, and we'll also add the logout, hmm? similar to the one that is in the slides, both in the React, like a button to logout and on the server. And then I will push everything, and if you have any question about the addition, feel free, as always, to write to me on Slack. This closes also the, part, the lecture part of the course. Uh, you will still have one lab next week. Um, that's it. Have a nice week, and see you at the exam. <laughs>